Good afternoon, everyone. I see a few more people starting to pop on board here. We're just waiting for a few more <coughs> folks to join us over the next uh, three or so minutes as we go. So we've got quite a few attendees on here right now, which is great. Hello, everybody. I'm not sure if you're able to give me a, a raise of a hand as a hello. So while we're uh, just sitting here, wonderful. I see the wave from somebody there. It's lovely to see you. Um, so today, welcome to our webinar uh, at HAL Clinics. My name is Samantha. Some of you may know me. Some of you are community members joining in. Uh, but today's presentation is going to be on isometric exercise, which is exercise without motion. And uh, as we are just waiting for a few folks to just collect in, I'm actually going to set a poll out there. I'm wondering if uh, those who are on board could go ahead and answer some of these questions as well. And I'm just going to launch the first one here. So which of the following best describes your reason for attending this webinar? And you've got a few selections there you can go through. So we're just going to sit tight. I'm going to wait for some of those responses to come in. They all come in um, confidentially as they're there. So I just start seeing the numbers come in. So this is great. So some of the reasons why some <laughs> folks have attended, we have curiosity about new exercise techniques and we've got dealing with fitness related injuries in there as well. So it is still coming in. We're almost complete here. That's good. So the heaviest load there, Dr. Lee. So Dr. Lee's on the back end here. We're uh, gonna chat with him very shortly. Uh, but we do see here that the curiosity about new exercise techniques is at 80% and the 20% is actually dealing with fitness related injuries. So that is uh, some of the things that we'll be speaking with you today about and stemming that interest. So I'm just going to close that poll down here now. And I actually have one more. Actually, I can share the results. Let's see here. Wonderful. So I've just shared those results out to you so everyone can see that most answered in the curiosity and then dealing with the fitness related issues. Um, next question is actually going to be in here. Uh, let me just find it here. Actually, so this question is gonna be launched here now. I just have to close the poll there. And so the next question is that I'm launching is, have you ever injured yourself when exercising? So we have the answer of no, and we have the answer of yes in there. Wow, great response there, guys. Thank you for jumping on board there quickly with that. Um, so as we're starting to balance out here, we actually have 50%, 57 probably uh, percent here is no, they haven't injured. And then we have 43% yes. So still at that 43%, that's quite a high injury rate for exercise. And it can definitely hamper uh, some of those decisions to exercise any further. So I'm going to just close that poll here. It stayed steady, 57% no and 43% yes. So once again, just another welcome. It's Samantha here from How Clinics. I am part of the team here, along with Dr. Lee and Claudia, our health coach. And I'm just going to hand you off to Dr. Lee to do his talk today. Uh, the webinar, once again, is on isometric exercise, exercise without motion. So hang tight, guys. What you can do uh, throughout, please feel free to write questions there. If anything does pop up during these slides and with Dr. Lee's talking about it, we can do a pause to answer those. But we'll also circle around towards the end, do another little poll, and uh, open up for a question period as well. So. Hang tight, guys, listening in to this new webinar, Exercise Without Motion with Dr. Jamie Lee. Thanks, Samantha. Um, those are two good poll questions because um, this is part of the reason why um, I decided to pick this topic. And uh, if anybody knows our clinic, we have a, quite a, a varied um, BMI and weight range, um, but a lot of our patients are um, heavier. And so one of our um, pillars, if you're aware of it, if you're part of our clinic, is exercise. And it's actually um, active living more than anything. But um, from an exercise perspective, um, it's the last thing uh, that we actually worry about. Um, the reason for that is when you're heavier, you're more prone to injury. And a lot of us who've uh, been heavy for um, a while, who uh, already have some form of injury, some imbalance of muscle, muscle asymmetry, you might have osteoarthritis, your posture might be uh, might be a little off. Um, and, and so you're more prone to injury. 
And so the, the, that begs the question, you know, can we actually exercise um, without um, hurting ourselves? And more importantly, is there a way to do that? Um, and so uh, one of the important things when we start to work on weight um, and when you start to lose weight, unfortunately, you actually will always lose muscle, uh, muscle mass, um, lean muscle mass. And so to mitigate that uh, motion exercise, obviously, will help um, slow that progression down. Although over time, about eight to 12 weeks, it does tend to plateau. Um, you know, or if anything, can we improve upon that too as well? And so um, for those that know me, I'm a big fan of fitness. Um, and that's how I really got started into this at the age of 16 is when I started lifting weights. And so been doing this kind of stuff for a while. And so this subject is really uh uh, uh, dear to me in, uh, in my, my undergraduate degree, I did a health science with, with a bit of uh, kinesiology. Um, and so this is not a new phenomenon. This is a, 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 a subject that has been around uh, for, for years and even actually centuries. Um, and so hopefully um, this will be more uh, relevant to you uh, more prevalent as well and uh, bring it to the forefront so they can incorporate this into your life. So what we're going to talk about in the next 30 minutes or so is just really the benefits of exercise, why, why we do that in general, right? Not just to feel good, obviously, but also not just to lose weight, but there are obviously lots of health benefits. And a lot of us will know this. I'm just going to re recap that very quickly. Um, but what are the differences? Uh, what are the different types of exercise that are available for us? And there's lots. And we actually do a lot of these exercises with maybe without knowing what they're called. Um, we're going to talk about what are the different types of muscle contraction. We're going to talk about the origins of isometric exercise um, and what is basically isometric exercise. And so um, as the title alludes to and what Samantha said, it's really exercise without motion. And how is that possible? And we're going to look into some of the clinical data. Obviously, I'm very science driven. So um, bear with me. I'll try to explain the best I can. They are synopsis, but I just want to prove a point that you can build muscle, you can get the cardiovascular benefits similarly to uh, the regular exercise that we think about. For example, if we go for a jog, go for a walk, run on a treadmill, et cetera, the benefits are there. And there are actually additional benefits that might be had uh, with isometric exercise. And so that brings us to kind of the conditions that may benefit this, such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, um, and even pain. Uh, pain management as well. And finally, we're going to talk about how to really incorporate um, these type of exercises into uh, your uh, lifestyle. And so um, when we talk about benefits of exercise, you know, when we, most of us think about getting into shape, looking better, that's great. You know, getting that six pack abs, some of us want to get stronger due to reduce um, injury. Um, and, you know, often uh, we do this towards uh, the new year the, to make it as a new year resolution. Uh, but unfortunately, 80% of people actually fail to keep their new year's resolution by uh, February's end, right? And so um, it's really hard to stick to um, exercise. One, if you go to the gym or you uh, go exercise for a run, usually you're doing about 30 minutes. So time um, plays a big role into why individuals um uh, actually fail to uh, continue with their New Year's resolution. Now, the other thing is when a lot of us wants to get in shape, we go to the gym, we, we plan an exercise program, but a lot of us actually have injuries as a result of that. One is we're not prepared for it, two, we haven't done it for a while, and you know, also we're all, uh, also overzealous too as well, right? And so similarly to the poll that you guys did, around 50%, I think it was roughly how people got injured during the beginning of the exercise. Um, the the statistics actually is about fifty percent of us uh, in uh, get injured when they when we, when we start exercising, for the first time after after a while, and a lot of this is be because as I mentioned um, that we're not used to we're weak and 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 also uh, we we're not uh, flexible as well, and we lose a lot of muscle strength when we don't re exercise regularly. Uh, on top of that, um, as you can imagine, um, when you move when you have motion that leads to injury it's very 
Um, I can't remember, you know, last time I heard someone say to me that, you know, they sat still and they've injured themselves. But I've heard a lot about people running, hurting their feet, tripping over something. When we walk, we trip over something. So when we have motion, we have a higher tendency to be uh, injured. And you think about also um, the purpose of our limbs and stuff like that and how they work, right? It's basically a pulley system. And, uh, and when that happens, things move and that creates injury in the tendons and the muscle and the joints itself too as well. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why isometric exercises is very beneficial in the beginning, um, uh, pre kind of exercise planning too as well, to get you ready to do uh, you know, uh, exercise with motion, basically with the regular exercise that we, we think about. Um, when we talk about isometric uh, contractions and isotonic contractions, so these are the two categories we think about. Most of us know uh, isotonic contractions. And so what isotonic contractions is basically uh, contraction of the muscle where the muscle length shortens or lengthens. So we call it eccentric, uh, which is uh, lengthening. So when if you, any of those that were any any uh, you guys that work out, um, when we do the negative part, that's eccentric contraction, right? But when we contract to shorten the muscle, we call it concentric contraction. Now that's in the category of isotonic contraction, um, as opposed to what we call isometric contraction. And so what isometric contraction is, you're actually contracting your entire muscle or the muscle that's being activated, but there's no shortening or lengthening of the um, contraction. So if you do a hand grip, you grip on, um, for example, you go on a roller coaster ride and you're gripping on the handlebars, that's an isometric contraction, right? So um, as you can imagine, you actually control how much force that you apply to that, as opposed to isotonic. If you're lifting the weights, you would have to change the weights uh, to increase the load stress on the muscle. Um, as you can imagine, now with the isometric, because there is no movement in the joints, you have less risk of injury as well. Um, and so these are some of the, obviously, um, examples of iso, uh, uh, iso, uh, isotonic contractions. So the, the woman there is doing um, uh, uh, curls in the biceps. And we can see the, the picture there, the gentleman is um, basically doing uh, squats there. So you look at the position he's at, look at the possibilities for injury, you know, from the standing position. So you're talking about the bar being on his shoulders, the way his shoulders is extended um, and it's uh, uh, adducted, it's stretched outwards. And when it goes down the, to the squats, so you put a lot of load and stress onto your spine and spinalis muscles. And then you have the knee stress, the ankle stress, and you have the buttock muscle. So you see where you can have a lot of injury. And also with isotonic contraction, you're doing multiple repetitions. And when then you do that, lots of wear and tear on the joints as well, right? And so um, I'm not saying that, you know, isotonic contraction or isotonic exercises are bad. Um, they're just at more risk for injury. And the best thing, the best way to think about it is how can we prepare ourselves to reduce the risk of injury when we do these, these uh, type of exercises? So let's talk about the origins of actually isometric contractions here. And so it's really rooted in ancient practices. It's been around for centuries and centuries. And so when you think about yoga, we're holding the pose and yoga has been around for thousands of years. It's seen in martial arts as well. Um, and so um, it's not a new phenomenon. You know, we see in the Greeks as well. And so in, in the, the athletes and the wrestlers in Greece, uh, what they used to do was to, to practice something called uh, thanos. And thanos basically um, is a Greek term for pushing against an immovable object. And, and that increases their, their strength over time. Now, it didn't really became a science until the gentleman on the right side started to learn about it. And this was in the early 1900s. He was actually a French scientist by the name of Etienne Jules Marais. Um, and so he actually started to study the dynamics of muscle and muscle tension and force and movement. And that's when really isometric exercise was documented from a scientific perspective. Now, it didn't really become extremely popular until the 1960s and whatnot, and was created by Bob Hoffman. If 
Um, anybody who knows York, uh, sorry, York Barbell, this is the gentleman that created the company. He wrote this book in the, I mean, the night, sorry, 1950s, I believe. Um, and um, he talked about isometric contraction exercises, how it can help the individual too as well. And in that book, he talked about physical rehabilitation, how it's used there. And it's used to help patients recover from injuries over surgeries uh, or surgery, sorry, uh, without excessive strain on the healing tissue of the joints. Um, and over the years, there's been more research and advancements uh, in terms of physiology. We know how muscles work and what kind of nutrition it does, how it, uh, how it affects our joints and whatnot, and became uh, more uh, uh, moved into the integration of fitness and training to increase muscle mass or what we call muscle hypertrophy to improve joint stabilization, uh, addressing imbalances, and so to maximize power, speed, agility in uh, athletes as well. And then obviously over the years, um, they have more technology to assess how much um, speed and power of the joints uh, forces are placed on certain joints as well uh, to, to offset that. So, so the fields have really advanced dramatically uh, since the 1950s. Now, the underlying premise or theory behind isometric contraction is based on Isaac Newton's third law. And so the picture on the right is Sir Isaac Newton. Um, and so his third law is uh, for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Um, and we experience this law every day all the time, but we just don't realize it, right? And so the best example is, for example, that kid there, the little boy, he's pushing on a wall and the wall's not moving. And so basically what happens is all the forces uh, is being pushed through his hands. So let's say he's pushing at 100 uh, Newtons of force. And so the wall is actually pushing back equivalently 100 uh, Newtons of force back at him. And so if he wants to push harder, he can push harder. If it's an immovable object, it will not move. But if it is a, uh, an object that he can overcome in terms of um, inertia, uh, then it will start to, to move. And so basically, this is the underlying premise of that. And so you can activate your muscle uh, at will to how much force slash intensity that you want to uh, elicit. For example, here, these are some, I know we all do this from time to time. So the plank on the on the right hand side. Uh, and so uh, basic holding it for a static position. And then uh, these wall squat there. Um, so the, sometimes we would call those suicide squats because you hold down, you hold that position until uh, total fatigue um, as well. So there are a few kind of key features um, or uniqueness to isometric contraction. And I just want to, um, so I just want to uh, talk about uh, these type of um, uniqueness as well. Um, and so with isometric construction, they, they stand out because obviously there is no joint movement, but despite that, there is contraction of uh, the muscles. And so similarly to cardiovascular endurance, uh, muscles actually um, have uh, muscle endurance. And so how many times you can contract the muscle before it actually fatigues. So a lot of time it could be related to lactic acid buildup, but also it's also related to uh, fitness as well. The other thing is that, you know, we also have uh, two types of muscle fibers as well. And so some of the muscle fibers are slow twitch fibers and some of the fast twitch fibers. And so uh, the best way to think about this is sprinters like Usain Bolt. He has a lot of fast twitch fibers and the marathon runners, um, they tend to have more of the slow twitch fibers and they can last a lot longer too as well. And so with isometric exercise, you can actually enhance some of these type of muscle fibers, particularly the slow twitch muscle fibers as um, well, right? Um, the other thing um, is um, when we talk about isometric contraction, so you think about the angles uh, that, that happens. So when we talk about an isotonic contraction, we go through the entire motions. For example, if you do a bicep curl, you start with your arm straight and you go up to the maximum. So you're close to 180 uh, degrees. Um, but with the isometric contraction, you're just staying at one angle. Um, but the beauty of it is, is that when you stay at one angle and you contract 
for an extended period of time, the muscles that get activated is similar to 15 degrees below and 15 degrees above the overall, uh, the, the, the initial um, angle that you're at. So if you vary angles, so for example, let's say if you do the bicep curl and you do 15 degrees, so you hold your contraction at 15 degrees, you're working 15 degrees below and 15 degrees above. So that brings you 30 degrees. And so now let's say you do another, um, another um, FET and you do uh, basic at 45 degrees. So you can work in down to 30 degrees and you work up to um, 50 degrees. Uh, sorry, uh, 60 degrees, and you let's say you go a little higher um, to 75 degrees. And so you can see that you can actually induce the entire range of muscle contraction similarly to your isotonic, but it's just more in a static mode. Uh, but the beauty, the difference is that you're activating the muscle much more. And so you can think about um, the, how much intense contraction you have when you do a full motion. It stays at that activation for only a split second, and then the 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 the, the wrist or the dumbbell moves uh, uh, along the, the the line of motion, and, and so this is the slight differences between isometric exercises and isotonic exercises. You can achieve the entire range of motion; you just do it statically. Whereas when you do isotonic, you're doing it in one smooth motion as well. There is another type of contraction or exercise called isokinetic. Uh, uh, basically, it's a subset of isometric contractions, and basically, you're you're doing various weights or different uh, uh, tensions with the same velocity. So that's the only difference. Um, and so, what are some of the benefits of isometric uh, exercise? And and this is probably the key thing, right? So one. You know, like um, any other um, exercise, it's based on muscle hypertrophy. I wrote hypotrophy. There should be hypertrophy, so I apologize for that. Um, it increases strength in that muscle that you're building. Uh, it also actually strengthens the tendon. Um, and the tendons are basically tissues that attach the muscle to the ligament, right? And the ligament is attached to the joint capsule or the joint itself. And so when you're building strength, you're basically stabilizing your joint, your, your, your joint itself. So uh, indirectly, you do joint stabilization. And the other thing is because you know a, a lot of muscles work in tandem or they're associated as a group. You're working also the small, fine muscles that help in joint stabilization, which is extremely important. And so you're talking about ex extreme athletes. That that makes the difference sometimes for winning or that split second. Um, of, of, of performance as well. Uh, I did talk about muscle angle as well, that you can do different uh, angles. Um, it activates slow and fast twitch fibers as well. So you can do endurance for your muscle. And so um, I did a little experiment, my, uh, experiment for myself. And so for, no, for those that know me, I, I do a bit of running, I do a bit of cycling. And I don't know if you ever ran and your legs feel very heavy and tight afterwards. Well, that's basically um, muscle um, muscle fatigue and tiredness, right? Um, what I did was that I didn't run for about two months, and then I did three sessions of um, isometric exercises, and I started running. And you know, long behold, typically uh, what happens to me is that my muscles be very tight towards the end of the run. But in this time, um, actually, I was able to feel fairly normal. You know, I didn't feel the same fatigue and, and tiredness uh, as well as I normally would. And, um, and so that's kind of some of the benefits as well. Other benefits include obviously reducing the risk of uh, injury, of overuse injury, the, the repetition on the joint. So if you have arthritis in the knee, like I did, I broke my patella, broke my femur, I have some crunches um, on the, the, the patella or the knee joint when, you, when, when I extend my knee, so that's called crepitus. Um, I have a bit of pain uh, at a certain angle too as well. And so you can overcome this by going to your angle and exercising that muscle at that joint. And often it actually improves the joint pain as well. And we use this a lot in rehabilitation world uh, additionally. Um, and so in the rehabilitation world, we use a lot of balance of muscle and to develop the muscle that we've lost. Uh, so redevelop the muscle that we lost too as well. Um, and there's another thing that's really important is, is uh, reestablishing, reestablishing the, the neural connection to the muscle. 
Um, if you've ever lost a lot of muscle, um, what you'll notice is that when you start to exercise, you see your muscles quiver or you look for a muscle that is very weak. For example, there's a muscle on the inner part of the thigh near the knee that's called the VMO muscle. And what that muscle is, it tracks a patella towards the inside. And for most of us, within about a week, if you get injured, the muscle starts to shrink. It's, it's really tiny muscle, but it's a very important muscle to stabilize the muscle, sorry, stabilize the, 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 the kneecap so that it tracks straight. So when it doesn't uh, track straight, what happens is we actually get, get injured too as well, right? Um, and so um, it, it reestablished that neural connection. We see it uh, working really well, that the quivering starts to improve as, a, as there's more muscle activation and hypertrophy. So those are some of the benefits of isometric exercise. And just keep in mind that isometric exercise is not a replacement for you know, our regular exercise, isotonic exercise. It can be used just before you start to do a formal uh, regular exercise. By doing some stabilizing exercise, you start to activate and warm up those muscles. You stabilize your joint. It can also be used to enhance certain maneuvers or, 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 or motions that you're doing that you find difficult uh, as well. Um, and it can be, do, it can be done um, anytime, in any part of the, uh, your exercise regimen to actually improve strength and hypertrophy in terms of what you're, what you're doing and what your goals are. So let's move to more of the medical benefits of, of exercise, oh, sorry, of isometric exercise. And one of the key things is osteoporosis. And we know weight bearing, load bearing exercises improves, improves osteoporosis and reduce the risk of fractures. Um, you know, and similarly, these two studies uh, demonstrate the exact same thing for isometric exercises as we see for other exercises as well. And so this first study was in Caucasian women with the age of 56 to 69. They all had osteoporosis. And, and what they did was they did five seconds only. This is just five seconds. You can, it's so short of isometric contraction at, at progressive resistance. And they did it for eight weeks. And what they found was that these individuals increased muscle strength. And what they also noticed was they measured a little uh, protein called um, alkaline phosphatase. And what that is, it's a marker for a new bone, for a new bone development. And so it takes only five seconds for each isometric contraction to start to see the benefits. And this is one of the beauties of isometric exercises is that if you have very little time, for example, when we go to the gym, it's going to be at least four to five minutes to an hour. You know, most exercises programs that we do, they're about 30 minutes, but you can achieve an exercise in 10 minutes. And so in a, in, in a whole week, you can do entire exercise. Let's say if you just do pure isometric exercises in less than an hour for the whole week, right? And so uh, for those who have a lot of time crunch, those are a big benefit. Um, for those who have, immo uh, so the next study is basically looking at patients who've had a femur injury or the thigh bone injury, the, um, uh, and, and they've been immobilized. And so uh, muscle wasting starts within uh, uh, less than a week if it's been immobilized. And what they looked at was they look, looked at the, the DEXA scan in these individuals, and basically the DEXA scan is what we we we, we do to look at the whether how much osteoporosis you have. And for these individuals, they perform isometric exercises five to ten seconds twice at maximum contraction three times per day. They did it for one month, so that is like less than a minute of exercise really. Right. And so some of these tests they did, they push against the ground, they push the toes against the ground too as well. Um, and so basic maneuvers that we all can do. And what they did was that they increase the femur neck uh, density uh, of the bone and also the greater trochanter. Those two areas, the, the femur neck, the thigh bone, right, where the joint is uh, at the neck portion and at this little knob that we feel when we push into our uh, hip on the side. Those are the two most common areas that we fracture when we fall down. And so it, it, it shows that, that with that amount of time and effort, these individuals can improve um, the, the density of their bone too as well. So let's move on to cardiovascular disease. Um, obviously a lot of us know people or we have experienced ourselves with you know, uh, um, cardiovascular health. Um, and so here they looked at how good your heart is pumping, right? And so the left ventricle is the pump that pumps the blood and we call that contractility. 
to the rest of the body. And they looked at patients who do deadlift. And so what they noticed was that one, they measured their, 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 their ultrasound of the heart. We call an echocardiogram to measure the, the, the left ventricular function. And they measured also the, the blood pressure. So there are two major things that noticed. Now, first of is that when they did the um, azometric contraction, the deadlift, they did, they saw a drop in the ejection fraction. Now that is normal. The reason for that is that there's less return to the heart. And then, so the heart has less blood and volume and filling pressure. And so it decreases. So it did, did, did decrease about 8%. But afterwards, what they noticed was there was 11% increase in the ejection fraction when the patient was in a relax, uh, relaxation phase of the contraction. So after the azometric contraction. That's a lot, that's a big improvement, right? And so um, you're moving, when we talk about 11%, that's from like a moderate to a normal. Uh, so moderate uh, impairment to a normal lung uh, ejection fraction. Now, remember this, these are transient in the sense that because right after there's an all the, all, obviously there's a bit of normalization that occurs afterwards, but that happens. And so um, also they did notice that the blood pressure did uh, go down and increase, but overall the mean blood pressure um, was better overall too as well. Um, also, uh, they looked at the quadriceps strength as a predictor for cardiovascular health. And this is why it's important for us to build muscle strength overall. And so what this study group was that they, they were able to correlate and see your maximum voluntary quadriceps, your thigh muscle strength, and, and they can predict your cardiovascular health. Um, and so, um, you know, your muscle, so your heart is a muscle. So there's lots of correlation between th these two. And so the stronger you are in terms of your muscle, the, the, the likelihood you're better, you're better off overall. overall. Um, and this last study is probably more of a, um, a study that I'm interested in. Um, and so what they hear, what they looked at was actually pat um, patients who they followed for 12 years. They followed them when, when in their youth and 12 years later. And what they did was that they measured the back extension and abdominal flexion. So they extended the back and, and then did basically like a, 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 abdominal flexion is basically a crunch and to look at their strength. And what they did know is that the weaker your back extension, the weaker your abdominal flexion, it's an inverse relationship. That means um, you had poor BMI, which is higher BMI, for, uh, higher triglycerides, um, you have higher di uh, you have higher uh, diastolic blood pressure and an overcompensated cardiovascular score. And so, if you had weaker muscles in your back, in your abdominal muscles, uh, you tend to have these other issues: higher BMI, worse triglycerides, higher blood pressure, and overall higher cardiovascular risk. So it's quite quite interesting that that we can actually predict these things with our muscle, and that makes sense because, you know, if we don't move, we lose our muscle strength, and we tend to have more metabolic dysfunction as well. Um, what about blood pressure? Um, so these were exercises uh, to to lower blood pressure. A lot of us are on two, three blood pressure medication. So this was a, a study in both men and women. They did eight weeks, and all they was hand grip. Um, two minute hand contraction at 30% of the strength four times per day. So that's really eight minutes of exercise per day. And they were able to show they reduced their overall blood pressure, mean blood pressure by eight millimeters, the diastolic by two millimeters. And what happened was that there's increased blood flow right afterwards to the brachial artery as well, right? And this is not exclusive to people with hypertension. This is also people with normal blood pressure as well. So you can actually improve, improve your blood pressure even better even if you don't have high blood pressure too as well. Um, obviously, uh, the, the blood pressure improvement um, is uh, more pronounced in people with higher blood pressures overall, and also your intensity. So if you have a high, you do a higher intensity of muscle contraction, and the more frequent you do it, the better your response is. Basically, the more you work out uh, based on isometric exercises, the more you have. And so uh, in another study, they did less than an hour per week. They were able to reduce their um, overall uh, systolic blood pressure by 10 and 6.7 by, um, by, sorry, diastolic by 6.7. Now, a lot of us are on uh, a, a med blood pressure medication called ACE inhibitors. And some of the names include perindopril, 
uh, captopril. Um, um, so those medications we take, they're the first line treatment for blood pressure, reduce your blood pressure by about the same, so about eight to 10. So here with exercise, you can equivalent to pharmacotherapy. So that's very powerful what you can achieve with exercise alone. Um, what about pain? A lot of us are in pain. Um, and so we can predict actually uh, patient's pain relative to the quadricep muscle. And so in this 600 uh, people study, it was a controlled. And so if you had back pain, you were 1,800% more likely to have weaker quadricep muscle strength than the average individual who have no, uh, sorry, no, no knee pain. Um, so that's a very powerful. So that's like a very strong correlation be between the two. And so that makes sense, right? Because if you have pain, you're probably not going to move in that kind of motion as much. So if you have pain, you're not going to walk as much. You're, gonna, you're not going to do any leg presses or leg extensions and stuff like that and knee pain to, to work on that, right? Um, what about nonspecific uh, low back pain? So um, people who just have general lot back pain from time to time. What they see is that patients have weaker muscles in the gluteus medius. So one of the muscles in the buttocks and the middle part of the buttocks um, it showed that they these individuals have weaker muscles. And so these, you know, it's, and it's not in our back, is it? It's, it's, it's down lower. And so uh, muscles don't work in isolation. They work in tandem. They're all attached to each other somehow, some way via uh, ligaments, via tendon sheaths, bone, bone connection uh, along the axial skeleton, all these things. So they're all connected in one way or another. Um, the other thing they also noted that uh, patients who have low back pain, uh, they tend to have uh, weaker, obviously, uh, back flexor and extensor muscle too as, as well. Um, what about tension headaches uh, for those individuals? So if you have uh, tension type like headaches, you know, um, you'll have weaker neck muscles as well. Um, but what the studies also show is that um, you can actually improve uh, upon the pain if you actually exercise some of these muscles. For example, in this five-week study, they did a, a isometric exercise on the quadriceps and was shown to, to improve uh, quadricep pain. Um, but also reduce, uh, sorry, catch up strength, but also reduce the pain in their, their knee joints as well and improve their functional disability. Um, just more studies on pain and arthritis in, in general. This study um, is a comparison between three groups. So people who do isotonic, basically our regular exercise that we do, isometric, so that's the static contraction. And we have control who don't do anything. And so on the pictures on the right, if you can see, what they showed was that some, these are the exercises that uh, they, they, they were doing. And so these are some traditional exercises, obviously that the physiotherapist, physiotherapist might uh, uh, get you to do as well. And so the study was a four week study. And so um, they looked at both isometric and isotonic contractions. And so in the isometric contraction, they did a progression of eight second, 10 second and 12 second contraction holds and they're about 30% of their uh, maximum strength. What they did find was that the only group to improve uh, pain was the isometric contraction. Uh, now, the beauty of this was that these benefits lasted nine months. And so basically they did a survey down the road. Now, whether these individuals continue or they're able to move more, we're not sure. But the survey says that there is probably long lasting benefits, even with the four weeks of exercise too as well. Um, a very common injury is neck injury, a whiplash type of injury too as well. And they hear same, same thing, they compared isometric versus, versus isotonic and controlled patients who don't do anything. And what they did was that they, for the isometric contraction people, they did wall squats. And you might be thinking, why would you exercise you know, your legs and back um, for, for, for your neck pain. Remember, they're all, your muscles are all connected, right? And so imagine what you do when you do a wall squat, your legs, so your back is straight, your posture is better, so you're improving all that too as well, right? So that's why they chose wall squat. And for the azotonic, the regular exercise, they put them on a stationary bike where you, it's more uh, reclined and they, they pedal there and they, they pedal a sub-maximal um, uh, threshold, right? And so what they found was that Isometric exercise improved circle neck pain, whereas the aerobic stationary bike did not improve. And I was like, how did that 
And how did the walls go improve the pain in my neck? And so there's a ph phenomenon called exercise induced hypoalgesia. Hypoalgesia is reduced, basically, it stands for, uh, it, it, uh, it means reduced pain. Uh, but there's also remote hypoalgesia. What they found was that um, there's a bit of something called endorphins that are released sometime, that is that, that feel good hormone that makes us forget about our discomfort and pain. Um, and also, there's also um, nerve activation that also reduces pain in our body, too, as well. And so even though you work a muscle away from where your pain is, you can still improve your discomfort and pain. And this goes with the agonist antagonist pairing of muscles. For example, your biceps pulls your forearm forward towards your body, whereas the triceps extend your, your elbow joints. Similarly, if you contract the muscle, other parts of the muscle starts to relax as well. Maybe not as much as the antagonist pairing, um, but they do relax to a degree, right? And so that, uh, that also allows them to um, improve their discomfort and pain. A lot of back pain is due to muscle tightness and tension, and that's why it improves. What about performance for you athletes out there who, who may be uh, competing? Um, and so what they did was they actually took a bunch of cyclists. They did a seven-week training, four sessions per week. And for these individuals, what they did is five-second max hold um, for, for 10 times and it's separated by 30-second rest. And what they found was that these individuals um, improved their overall endurance during moderate intensity. And one of the ways we, mo we measure in, um, um, efficiency of exercises is, is basically what we do is how much oxygen you consume. So if you consume less, then you need less fuel, right? Um, for the same amount of output, basically. And so what they did was that for these individuals who did these five second max holds times 10 um, for, with the 30 second rest of basically a 35 second workout times 10, um, that these individuals needed less energy during moderate intensity. And that's for most of us. Most of us don't do high intensity. It's usually aerobic respiration, aerobic exercises, um, sorry, anaerobic exercises, but more for aerobic, what we do. So light jog per se, light bike ride, you'll actually perform better. So these are professional cyclists. What about just average Joe like myself? You know, what they did was an eight week, they took three sessions per week. They did isometric, isotonic, as connect individuals. And what they found was that, you know, for these individuals, you know, your lean muscle mass improved similarly to amount of isotonic uh, contraction or exercises. Um, but they didn't show uh, a, a, a significant improvement in terms of performance. So the way they, they assess performance here was a triple hop distance. Um, there was uh, no improvement um, with respect to that. And, but remember, if you don't train in a certain motion of exercises, there is also a bit of skill involved in doing this. So that's why you might not see it too as well. But having said that though, the muscle gain is similar to those who exercise. So it's just to show you that you can build muscle but also build the endurance of your muscle simultaneously too as well. Um, diabetes, very important to all of us. Um, what happens to, to your diabetes or your blood sugar when you do an isometric contraction? Um, the, there's a phenomena in the body where, you know, um, we, we typically think that we need insulin to bring sugar into our cells. The only organ, um, that, um, that do not require insulin basically is uh, muscle to bring in uh, sugar. And so you have, if you have more muscle you, or you exercise, your sugar will lower to a degree until you, your body will produce more glucose for your exercise. But in patients who do isometric exercises who are diabetic, type 2 diabetic, what they did notice was that there's an increased glucose uptake in the fat cells and the muscle cells. Um, and so this is independent of anything else. And so we know that this can affect overall our um, blood sugar levels. Um, one of the other things I mentioned uh, recently was also this increased blood flow that occurs when they measured it. And blood flow is very important, right? And so if you can pump more blood to your cells, um, there's more likelihood of us improving our overall glycemic control too as well. And additionally, you know, uh, if you want to burn uh, fat cells, uh, you have to bump uh you have to uh, pump blood because uh, blood carries oxygen and fat cells need oxygen to, to undergo um, um, 
lipolysis. Uh, the other thing is, what about patients who are diabetics with neuropathy? Um, so basically, these, indivi these individuals who've had longstanding diabetes and they've had sensory problems as well. And so they, they studied these individuals in a 12-week isometric exercise program with a bit of stretching. And what they noticed was their, their strength improved and they, they lowered their blood pressure. And there was actually also improvement in terms of their balance and uh, their balance as well as a result of the muscle strength improvement. So even though you have nerve damage, you can still improve your strength, improve your, obviously, indirectly, your blood sugar too as well. Um, now, I just touch upon a few conditions, diabetes, joint pain, arthritis, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease. There's other uh, conditions that are also improve. It's been studied in multiple sclerosis as well. All these, um, really, there's nothing that it cannot improve. So just to summarize for you guys, I know it's um, taking a little longer than usual, um, but isometric exercises, um, does not involve any movement, um, but it does, you still have the benefits of the contraction. The beauty of it is that you control the intensity yourself. Um, in, uh, isometric exercises can reduce injury by improving muscle hypertrophy, uh, working on the small muscles, working on joint stabilization, working on symmetry. Um, benefits of isometric uh, contraction or exercises can be done with only about 10% of your maximum strength. So you don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of time as well. Some of the studies that I, I pointed out to you was only about two seconds of full contraction of their muscles too as well, right? Obviously, if you need, if you have high contraction, higher frequency um, of repetitions, you're going to get more benefits too as well. Um, isometric exercise improves muscle growth stability, can improve osteoporosis, can affect in a positive way your diabetes uh, and cardiovascular health. For those that want performance, can improve your muscular endurance and muscle, mus muscle hypertrophy. It can also reduce pain in our cell and pain overall too as well. So um, I tweak my neck quite often. And what I typically do is I do the agonist antagonist exercises to release the tension in the necks and it works very fast. It's really to be honest, we do right, and um, uh, it's really instantaneous in that sense. It's, it is brief relief, but it's nonetheless relief as well. And the beauty of it is that you actually don't need a lot of equipment. Now, there are specialized equipment that can maximize, make life easier for you, but you can do this in the comfort of your home. And that leads us to the next thing is, you know, how can you incorporate asymmetric exercise into your own routine, your home without any fancy uh, equipment? And for that answer, what we're going to do is for those that uh, sign up into our webinar, we're going to send you some information with isometric exercises and how you can incorporate that. Um, and we're going to give you maybe some um, regimen to do as well. Now, uh, a preface to that, um, please consult your, your physician before you, you do any exercises. Um, these are just for educational purposes. And, you know, these are just stuff that we feel will be beneficial for you. Uh, so that ends my uh, presentation. If there's any questions, by all means, uh, go ahead and, and ask away. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee. That was uh, really amazing to know that I can put a lot of effort and mo uh, less motion into my exercise, but have more time. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> don't the, need to the be the there time. all the yeah. time, but yeah. I can do it in smaller loads and Absolutely, it's yeah. anywhere. That's the best part of isometrics is not needing anything other than your body and in a solid form, uh, a wall to, to deal with that. So um, now I do have a few last questions for the group that we have right now, and it's going to be, I'm just going to launch it now. So how likely are you to incorporate isometric exercise into your regular fitness routine after attending this webinar? So thinking about the thoughts, the information that we've given, um, what would you see that you're where you sit, very likely, likely, neutral, unlikely, or very unlikely as we go. And we do have a few other questions that we'll answer. Uh, I see two, two folks there have uh, got questions. We'll answer those just shortly. Um, so that we've got all in. So very likely at 60% and likely at 40%. So not at neutral, not at unlikely, not at very likely. So I think we we did a good point there. It's sharing that information of the benefits um, and the, the lower risks. So I'm going to end that poll. And I have one more that I'd like to ask is, 
launch this. So how do you currently balance your cardiovascular exercise with your strength training in your fitness routine? So what do you focus on right now? So before we uh, got some information about our isometrics, are you focusing on cardio? Are you focusing on strength training? Are you doing both or one more than the other? So we have in here, got a few more uh, to, to pop in there. So please come on in. You've got some more time on this uh, poll here. We've got a few folks, but I am starting to see here. Now we've got some more focus on cardio, some more focus on strength, and I currently don't have a fitness routine. So this uh, is good for all of those three groups. So I'm just gonna let it go a little bit longer uh, as you find those buttons. Beautiful. So while while that's going on the side there, Dr. Lee, um, I just got a few questions here as well that have popped up. So if you were in a wheelchair, does upper body exercise still benefit? Is it still beneficial? So that kind of goes in line with what you were talking about there. Mm -hmm. You know, we have neck pain, you mm -hmm. know, working on other portions of the body is a beneficial. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you can put your insight. Yeah, there. The, the, the answer is absolutely yes. You know, um, for example, you're the, the, the individual may be in a wheelchair for lots of reasons, whether it's like a nerve injury or just kind of um, extreme weakness or um, neuropathy, whatever it may be. Um, but remember, your body is connected um, from head to toe, from every, you know, the, you know, the knee bone, the thigh bone is connected to the knee bone, whatever it may be. Um, and so it matters, right? And so your whole body is a pulley system. And so um, the cardiovascular benefits is still available. For example, if you hold your, um, your, your squeeze your fist as hard as you can right now, um, what, what you're doing is you're acting the muscle in the brachial artery, uh, the muscle flow into that when you release the blood return. And so your heart has to pump still to keep the blood pressure up to 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 breathe, uh, sorry, to to maintain a certain amount of blood pressure, um, and so you still get the cardiovascular benefits too as well, right? So it's, I'm just talking about cardiovascular benefits, but absolutely, absolutely. And you know, you think about it, if you're in a wheelchair, what are you going to use? You use your arms a lot, right? And so you want to be as strong as possible in your upper extremities, um, and it's a lot easier actually to do these isometric exercises. Um, versus uh, isotonic uh, exercise, which is a regular exercise that we normally think about in, in a wheelchair too as well, right? And so absolutely, there's still benefits to be had um, doing isometrics in a wheelchair. If anything, this should be one of the more important ones to actually do. Um, the next question here by um, is was, um, you know, is, are there dedicated programs um, for this, or it, or is it we get the information from from the physio? Your physiotherapist will know this information. A lot of them don't do it. They typically do in the very beginning of of injuries. I've I've been injured pretty bad myself. If those that know me, I was in hospital two weeks with my entire right side broken. So I broke my femur bone, my right ankle, right patella, and uh, wrist, forearms, both wrists and forearms and whatnot. And so, um. So I, I went to, so I was well rehearsed in, in physio in physio because I did it myself for, oh, I, I did it for a month and a half with them and I had to stop to go to med school and did my rest myself for two years. And so what they typically do is they do a little bit of isometric exercise in the beginning. As soon as the swelling goes down, as soon as you're able to move your, 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 your joints and stuff like that, they start to do basically isotonic regular exercise with motion. And it hurts, like your, your knees swell up after a while, you have to take a break, a day extra, you know, because you're overzealous too as well, right? Even though you're doing light weights, you haven't done it for a while. So the answer is yes, they do know this, but they probably under deploy it. And now there's a big movement actually in athletes to get the best um, advantage. And so they're moving back more to isometric exercises to reduce injury too as well. Um, and so that's becoming a more popular thing. It's always been around in athletes, um, particularly strength athletes as well, because they want to squeeze every single muscle as much as possible. Um, uh, there are specific programs, there's books and stuff like that that are available. If you even Google, um, in, you know, in YouTube, there will be isometric exercises. So there's lots of information around, which is, it's not in the forefront, it's not sexy, it's, it is boring, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's extremely beneficial. And I think that's the more important thing is it's not sexy, right? You're not, you're running around, you're not riding your bike, you, know, you don't get the other stimulations as well. Um, but we'll send you something um, as well uh, in the next week, uh, information on uh, maybe a regimen on, on isometric exercises. 
Yes, and, so that goes last, into answering that last question mm -hmm. in the info we'll be sending. Will there be examples of exercise or should we coordinate with the team? So if you're part of our health clinics team here, um, yes, you'll you'll be getting some of the information we'll be sharing with that with you during programming as part of your education. But in regards to this webinar, just hang on for the next few days and we'll be sending it out to everyone who's registered for today's webinar. So the, the main thing is just hang on for a moment. Please stem curiosity go out there, have a look into the, the web around isometrics. It's quite popular in social media right now um, as well. Um, there's a lot of wall exercises out there, but please always check in, make sure that you are healthy enough to do so as well before pushing yourselves to certain limits. <clears throat> um, so that that poll, that last one um, that we did, how do you currently ba balance your, your fitness? We had 20% out of the three, more focus on cardio, uh, we've got cardio and strength training and more focus on strength, but we have a 40% that currently aren't active in a fitness routine. So, you know, I encourage those individuals to start trying to do things in your own environment, uh, playing with those isometric holds, seeing how much playing with your wall at home or on the floor or pushing your, your arms or limbs against an object as well. Um, just just dabble, you know, see where that's getting you because we know that the dabbling, the few minutes a day is, is beneficial. All right. Um, do you have any closing notes there, Dr. Lee, or we're, we're good there? Is um, there yeah, I mean, the, 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 I, just, I, mean I, I didn't talk a lot about kind of the, the, the negative effects of, uh, of, of these exercises, right? You know, when you do these isometric holds and stuff like that, you know, one of the biggest thing is actually breathing. If you read up on this stuff like that. And so you can, if you don't breathe, you can, you can um, induce what I call the, uh, the salva maneuver, basically breath holding, and then we can pass out, right? And so, uh, and so that's a very important so breathing technique. And so that's why it's, it's good to, to, to train with someone who knows who's done this before, or a trainer who's been trained and doing some isometric exercises too as well. Another thing is like, you know, if you haven't exercised for a while, um, there's delayed onset muscle soreness the next day that can happen. Your joints might be a little more stiff uh, the next day as well um, until that kind of disappears. Um, and so, so, so it's not without any problems. You know, if you do, if you're overzealous, like me once in a while, you get a mm -hmm. nice contraction, you get a, like a, like a Charlie horse per se, right. And you got to stretch it out too as well. So there's a bit of a warm up. So it's not without its injuries. Don't get me wrong. Um, please be careful. If you do this, seek professional, um, advice and, um, guidance. Um, but it is, uh, for the most part, once you've done it for a while, uh, very safe. Beautiful. I'm going to get one last opportunity there for any of our folks watching there for any last questions. Uh, we've just had the three so far. You can always reach out to us as well. If you're a current patient within our app, uh, then you can message your coach there as well to ask some questions. Or if you're a community member joining us today, please feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, we can help um, guide you with some small brief information like we're going to be sending you in the next week. But uh, if you need our contact there, it's also info at Hal Clinics, or you can come up to our website at HalClinics.com as well to reach out to us. But uh, we are here with our services for our weight management patients at How to Heal. And this is part of their structure and information. And if you like what you're seeing, jump on over and see how we can help you there as well. All right, well, no other questions there. So I'm gonna wrap it up for the evening. I hope that you uh, all found that informative there for you. And we will see you all either in clinic or virtually or on our next webinar coming up next. So next month webinar will be at the last Wednesday of the month. And I don't have in front of me, Dr. Lee, what did we say that was a metabolism? Yes, energy and metabolism. Energy and metabolism is the next one coming up. So for those that are interested, I think it's already up and ready on our website so you can pre-register and to get into there as well. So take care, have a great long weekend coming up and we'll see you all soon.